all of you must be familiar with anchors and I'm pretty sure that all of you must be familiar with the role of anchors in wireless or cellular networks in particular. Uh, we have our own rusty anchors like because they have fixed positioning, they have rigid structure and they have one size fit all approach. Now moving on with times, we need our new shiny anchors which should be scalable, which should be agile and which should be service aware in its processing. So these are the motivations which bring us to this topic today. And so what are the challenges that we face in terms of designing this uh, new anchor requirements or new anchor functionalities? Is the ultra low latency services, uh, which is one of the use cases in 5G networks. Um, or you can say that these are the use cases with the most stringent uh, requirements uh, in terms of reliability and latency as you can see in this graph. Uh, the reliability uh, is you require is pretty high and the latency is pretty low. Like for some use cases like industry automation or your uh, healthcare services, the latency requirements are up to one millisecond uh, down to that. So <clears throat> the radio guys or access guys, they say that they can achieve this reliability and this latency with your advanced uh, radio technologies like millimeter waves and coding technologies and modulations. The current uh, survey says that it can be achieved these latency and reliability figures but what we believe is that only doing it in access will not gonna be enough we need more intelligent or more uh, service aware core networks in order to maintain this end-to-end -end latency uh, and reliability so this leads us to what currently we are heading towards Currently our code uh, as what uh, CGTP is doing is we are looking towards uh, our enhanced decor where we have our multiple uh, core networks in conjunction with our conventional EPC. So that is the current uh, work going on in CGTP in terms of LTE. But what we want to move towards is more a cloud based virtualized environment where we have our beta networks uh, like access by call, metro, core, and on top we have our services uh, deployed as virtual functions on, in a cloud or something like that. We are also moving towards more of a slice concept, but that is not are focusing on today, just let's stay with the cloud and uh, virtualized environment. So that's what we are going towards and uh, so for our solution or what we are doing, we also target this kind of an environment where we have our virtualized uh, functions deployed in a cloud environment in core or in edge. So what we propose or what we are working now is towards a uh, container based uh, anchor implementation. So what do we mean by container based is that we can have our container, uh, sorry, anchor implementation as a software which can be deployed in a, in a data plane uh, in containers. Uh, this gives us the freedom of or you can say the agility to deploy it in the core or in the edge or we can have on some edges or even we can go to the RAN but that's what we are targeting we are just targeting our edge and our core uh, at this moment so as you can see that we have some anchors deployed in our edge cores and an anchor deployed in our virtualized core uh, what gives us what this gives us is basically the ability to expose these anchors or expose this functionality as a service on top of a service orchestrator where your tenants 
can choose the policy or choose the KPIs on which they're going to deploy their anchors uh, in their data plane networks or in their virtual networks or in their slice. Uh, we can call it many names. So uh, that's uh, what we are basically working towards. And uh, what it also provides us is provides us an opportunity to embed uh, functionality of processing uh, in anchors. Uh, in SDN networks, we usually consider our uh, data plane to be very uh, just data forwarding. I don't want to use the word dumb, but uh, that actually it is. It's just forwarding the data and no processing actually is being done in your uh, data plane. But uh, we envision our anchors to be a little but a little more than that. We want our anchors to process the services based on what they are. For example, in this in this slide, what we are trying to deliver is the SDN controller basically sets up the path for different services, service one, service two, and your anchor basically is the ingress point for any process or any service that comes to this uh, this edge or this uh, slice. So once uh, any service uh, or flow belonging to that service comes to that particular anchor in that slice or in that uh, edge core. Uh, the anchor is gonna uh, do that or gonna learn that which service it belongs to, what kind of processing it requires, and then forward that service on its particular path, like shown in this figure, without contacting the SDN controller. So what it through this, we gonna bring back the intelligence a little bit to the data plane. By this, uh, by no means we are trying to say that the whole thing come, uh, the whole control of uh, the data or the service comes down to the uh, data plane again. Uh, we believe that to achieve minimum latency to, uh, for the end-to-end -end delay, to minimize it, we need to uh, speed up the process and communicating with the SDN controller every time is uh, a time-consuming process uh, considering when we have huge uh, traffic loads. So in that case, uh, this kind of deployment or this kind of processing will help speeding up the process. So the benefits of uh, what we are doing or the anchor as a service or container-based deployment is the reduced latency, as I explained, the processing comes down the anchor depending on the policy of your tenants. So that will gonna reduce the end-to-end -end latency. It provides us the scalability uh, because we can deploy anchors on demand. We can have a static deployment and then we can have dynamic deployment to increase uh, the capacity or to have a load balancing kind of thing. Uh, we have a service aware Agile placement because like some services require your anchor to be in edge if they are very latency critical or they are not delay intolerant uh, they are having a delay intolerant uh, kind of a nature uh, we can have it also in RAN as I mentioned but that's currently we are not focusing and uh, then we have a service aware processing for latency optimization and we have a facilitation in end-to-end -end service stitching. Uh, this is like our future uh, focus that how you gonna stitch your uh, service from your RAN to your edge to your core. I mean to have that whole path designed you need to stitch your uh, separate domains together and to have that stitching we need some kind of a stitching point where you can stitch. So Anchor can provide a very uh, intuitive way or intuitive place to stitch these services uh, across multiple domains. So that is like what we are going towards in our work. Scenarios, uh, uh, I don't talk about load balancing, I mean it's very uh, intuitive because we have container-based deployment, so we can deploy our containers 
or our anchors um, as per demand. Uh, we can have uh, we can deploy multiple instances of a same anchor, or we can deploy multiple anchors and have a service bifurcation. Like for example, over here, we have two different anchors. Uh, one anchor takes care of all the services, but maybe there is one service which is uh, special, which has, which require more uh, uh, more service or not service, but like which require more uh, kind of a processing in terms of uh, delay and latency. So we deploy it on a separate uh, anchor to minimize the end-to-end -end delay. So this kind of load balancing can also be provided. So uh, and the second scenario is uh, again service mobility. Uh, this is basically a classical or traditional kind of a scenario where we have uh, uh, geographically distributed uh, cores, uh, edge cores, and uh, we have some service, uh, the mobile mode moving along the way. Uh, so if you gonna stick with this anchor, you will have a triangular routing effect, and to mitigate that, we need to uh, transfer our service from one edge core to another edge core, and in that way, the anchor. Uh, uh, can play uh, a critical role or to facilitate this kind of movement from one edge core to another edge core. So these are the two scenarios that uh, we are currently working on. Uh, and today I'm going to talk to you about the service mobility uh, scenario in which we are uh, currently doing the dynamic service anchor selection. That, which means is that. Uh, once your service arrives, you have to choose which anchor to select. Uh, so in that case, how you will select? So what is the criteria and what is the algorithm or the process? So the selection or dynamic selection of anchor can happen at uh, the time when the service initiates. Then again at the load balancing, you need to select the anchors again. In case of fault management, mobility or service mobility, you have to select the dynamic, uh, you have to select the anchor in a dynamic way. So, for our the criteria to select uh, the anchor dynamically, we have uh, latency, throughput, reliability. So, these are the criteria we are currently considering. Then, uh, the state of service anchor in terms of utilization that currently how much the anchor is being utilized. Yeah. Uh, this is the algorithm uh, for doing it. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, there is actually nothing much. We are selecting our anchor instance uh, in the data plane based on its current utilization levels. Uh, we are working to enhance this algorithm by using more advanced techniques like Knapsack algorithm and uh, dynamic programming approaches. So, this one is like just the basic one that we have started with. I mean, we have progressed along with it, but uh, this is just the basic one. Uh, so, what we have been doing in development, let me talk about that a little bit. Uh, we, we have this uh, dynamic anchor selection. Uh, we have a service plan, what we need uh, in terms of modules on top of ONOS is uh, sorry, uh, service classification module, we need a resource monitoring, we need service path provisioning, KPI repository and uh, selection algorithm. So what we have uh, done so far is that uh, for our monitoring and service classification requirement, we uh, have used a very basic uh, kind of mechanism, but what we can use is a uh, open TAM, which is a current project going on in ONOS. So we can leverage from this project and, and plan to uh, include it in our solution uh, and leverage from it going forward. Then there is another project, the service function chaining, which we believe is really going to help us because in order to provision of service path, that how that path
path is stitched together and uh, in our future work of uh, service stitching uh, maybe th this project we are really looking forward to that how this comes along because it really complements what we are doing and uh, which projects can take uh, leverage from our work is basically the LISP subsystem support uh, in that I think by selection uh, the anchor point selection can really help them out in selection of their list routers that how you can dynamically select your list routers in order to uh, have your uh, locator and indicator selection and interchange that kind of work so these are these are the work so what is basically left for us is to develop this SAP selection algorithm or you can say DAS selection algorithm uh, so this is what we have been majorly working on uh, this is our layout of our small test bed. We are currently not working with containers or that kind of thing, although we are working with cord, but for anchor, uh, anchor point selection, we are just working with ONOS and we have this uh, mini net, not mini net, uh, we have OBS based uh, switches. Uh, we use Raspberry Pi boards and deploy them in a very simple, small topology um, and we move from uh, move our mobile node from one access point to another access point and we are selecting uh, anchors uh, like we have two services one is real time traffic and which is non real time traffic so for the real time traffic we take a different path and we select this middle uh, switch as an anchor because this is the most underutilized switch Otherwise, uh, the longer the, the other path is also the same in terms of number of hops, but because on this path we have some background traffic and the utilization is high, so uh, for non real time traffic we take this path because it's not really critical. So, for critical and real time traffic, we take a path and select an anchor which is uh, underutilized and path is uh, widest, shortest path. So uh, these are our little uh, experiments uh, or experiment domain where we are working and in on ONOS as I said we service classification for monitoring and service path provisioning we are currently using uh, what ONOS provides or some very basic mechanism like uh, port uh, for service classification we are just using the port numbers of TCP, UDP uh, in terms of monitoring we just see that how much uh, switch capacity is there and how much is the data rate so we just calculate utilization on a very basic level uh, so for service path provisioning we are currently working with the what uh, we are trying to use the intent framework or we are trying to use your segment routing so this work is still like in progress uh, this DAS module is basically what implements our algorithm which I mentioned earlier and the service anchor provisioning is basically selects the service anchor and then how the flow and feeds are installed in that and all that work that is basically service anchor provisioning uh, I have a little video of demo which uh, I hope works I converted it into PDF and I oh. didn't realize that it would not work. Do you still hear the bug? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, actually, in this video, we try to show that uh, how that topology I showed, in that topology, how you move, and in Ono's GUI, how the flows which are moving from taking one path, they move to another path after the handover, like how that switching happens and anchor, anchor point just moves your switch, you know, flows from one path to another path so uh, that kind of work was shown in this video I really apologize, it's my mistake, I didn't realize that PDF will not play the video 
Anyway, this is uh, all from me. Uh, if you have any questions, please. No questions. Uh, my question is for you, uh, working with Omos and working with Core, uh, how tough it was for you, how challenging it was for you at the beginning. Yeah, I want to, for the people to hear your, you know, your challenges, your difficulties you might have at the beginning until you get the point. Uh, I think working with Omos is uh, not tough. I think it's pretty easy. We started working with Onos uh, maybe one and a half year back. Uh, at that time, things were not so good in terms of documentation. There were still um, confusions. Luckily, what uh, happened to us is that uh, Onos guys, our own lab guys, they had a code walkthrough event uh, in 2016, no, 2015, uh, December or something. So that really helped us, that really kicked us on uh, and cleared up a lot of things for us like how to start developing and how to, where to write code and how to test and log and all, all that kind of thing. So almost was really good but with core uh, it's really tough because uh, your, the documentation really tells, gives you a clear idea or the kind of words your documentation talks about are very different than what you actually see when you deploy it. Once you go and you see oh, there's a mass and there's a head node and there's a prod and these are the words which are not in the documentation. You really don't know where to go and what to do. So in overall concept wise, core documentation is pretty good but in terms of actually development, going and deployment and working with it is One more question. Uh, since you have already made a sort of a deployment, uh, a proof of concept, maybe that's what you call it, uh, have you done any measurements and comparing your solution uh, to other solutions and see the benefits or maybe the drawbacks of your solution? Have you reached that point already or you're still working towards that idea? Uh, in terms of ONOS, yes, we have done that. In terms of uh, like this work, um, yes, and almost we have uh, because we can measure the latency and throughputs not actually in ONOS but like your mobile node or your, uh, your servers, like okay, how much traffic throughput is there and, and the switches, it works. But in terms of core, this is one of the challenges we are facing right now because, uh, like, uh, after next presentation, my colleague he will talk about uh, CIAB. Uh, and a service selection function that we are currently making in our core to select different services. What our dilemma is right now is that how we can, what we can measure, first of all, what we can measure to show that it has increased the performance in somehow. And then once we recognize what, then how to do it. So currently we are, yeah, really stuck with that. that how we can show that our work has some performance gains uh, in code. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Any other questions, maybe? Actually, I have one more question. Is there any relation between this ecosystem and the slicing system? The glue between the anchoring system and the slicing is that in, in slicing, I mean, uh, in these slides, I don't show slices. In these slides, I will show it as a edge or core or like virtualized cloud system. But in inside a cloud system, we can have multiple slices working on. Or as the current concept going on, that some, sli some similar services will be grouped together in a particular slice. So the anchor which is in the edge or in the, in the core, that can also be the anchor in the slice. So, and one of the, like I talked about the slice selection function, the 
I will select a slice. Okay, I got a slice, I selected it, but which point of a slice I connect to? Currently, that is not available. Okay, you can have your SFC and you can say that, okay, this is the starting point of the SFC and here you connect, but that will be different for every service. So, for every different service, you will have every different starting point, which is more complicated. So, that's why we uh, came up with this idea of anchoring, which have served us quite well in our legacy networks that anchor is the point where you have all your data which harbors over there so why not use the same concept over here where it gives us one starting point that okay connect here and from there you go thank you, thank you very much